Okay guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm actually finally doing my Fort Park Fright Nights review. Uh, I, I went to Fright Nights on the 4th of October, uh, and I thought I'd finally get this review out. I've been wanting to get it out for weeks, but I'm just trying to find time. Um, so yeah, just to let you know, there will be spoilers from the mazes in this uh, review. So, um, we're going to start off with what I thought was the weakest maze this year. Or when me and uh, Ryan went, uh, we the maze is there. Firstly, I'll talk about the event in general. This year, the the event feels a, a lot better compared to last year. Last year, it was quantity over quality. This year, it's quality over quantity, which I think is brilliant. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about. Uh, the weakest maze we did all the way up to um, most intense. Please take into consideration we didn't do the Fear to Five Challenge, Containment or Terror Amity High. So we haven't done that, but we're hoping to go back soon. So the weakest maze that we did on the night was Blair Witch. Now Blair Witch last year was a really good maze. This year, Blair Witch wasn't as good. I don't know whether because we did it as soon as it opened, we were the first group in. I don't know whether that has something to do. But um, last year, you entered um, in the compound area next to the Army Celeb building, and you then sort of enter around the back of where Jungle Escape is, and then you'd go down towards Inferno. This year, the maze uses a bit of temporary queue line and the Jungle Escape queue line, which I think is pretty good, and it's good to see uh, Jungle Escape's theme in outside as well. Um, but where the pre-show for it last year was, you now have a safety briefing in there through the audio, which I think is pretty good, and the theme in is still there as well. And then you go down and you see like a car, and it starts smoking. Uh, I'm trying to remember what I'm talking about. You then go down through a door and you go down like this path but you then double back on yourself because you hit a dead end. Now this was a really good thing in Blair Witch. I like how they've extended it this year uh, and then after that you sort of go through uh, the old safe zone hut which was on zombie hunt so it's using a bit more zombie hunt route this time. I think yeah and then you go down and you continue through the rest of the route from last year um, can I just say the acting in there was good? We had about six or seven actors in there, so it was really good. Uh, the feeling is brilliant in there this year. The audio is brilliant. Um, and yeah, the finale is still the best bit. The smoky heart. We didn't have an intense run through. I've only been there five or six minutes this year, so it, won't. it was a little bit longer than last year. But yeah, the only reason why I say Blair, Blair Witch wasn't the most wasn't the best maze on the night, it's because I, I just felt like the actors weren't putting the effort in really, I don't know, it, it just didn't make me jump as much as it did last year, but either way it was still a good maze, like, I'm happy that Blair Witch was back, I was looking forward to Blair Witch this year and it let me down slightly, very slightly it did let me down. Uh, and then the next maze, which was the second weakest maze in the night, was the Walking Dead Living Nightmare. So, it still uses Slammo's old queue line. However, when you're queuing in the tunnel this year, in the tunnel inside the building, uh, you have you've now got a safety briefing playing through an audio towards the front and it and it's Negan so I think I like how they've done that this year uh, scenes wise it has mostly remained the same uh, we didn't have Negan in the pre-show when we went through which is a shame we had the uh, alternative pre-show uh, most of the scenes are the same apart from the ending when you come off the school bus now you walk down like normal but you actually now go into the woods uh, these are these now fit featured the whispers from uh, The Walking Dead, I think season 10, I think season 10, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, 
And that ending was really good. We had some good jump scares in there, but I just felt like there wasn't a lot of actors. There was about, outside of the pre-show, we had about four or five actors. It was lacking actors. Uh, whether, whether I, I don't know, but Living Nightmare was good. The ending was good. I'm happy that they've finally got an ending sorted now. And yeah, Living Nightmare, it's good. Personally, I do think this is the final year for Living Nightmare this year. I personally think, I don't know. Could, could they come back? Comment down below, do you think any of the Walking Dead mazes will come back for next year? Right, next, we're now into the top three mazes, which were the good ones, the really good ones. At three, I'd say is Platform 15. Now, I was excited for Platform 15 to come back, and I'll be honest, I was not expecting any changes in there. But then when we found out it's got a new ending, I was very excited for it. Uh, they've changed up the storyline now. You also now use a completely different queue line now. Uh, you now enter the queue through Timber Tugboat's queue line. You use the full-on Timber Tugboat queue line. And you go through like the panel in the fence where Dead Creek Woods was last year. And you queue sort of there. It's good that um, the Dead Creek Woods theming is still there. And I feel like it fits in a little bit. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, the walk down to the train, that's been slightly updated this year, which I like. Uh, the train looks absolutely brilliant this year. It's covered in black stuff and it looks brilliant. Um, the bit along the train, the train sequence has slightly changed because it now has like a red light in the carriage and some curtains, which I think looks pretty cool. Uh, and then after the train, the village is still the same. For some reason, this wasn't as intense this year, the village. It didn't feel as intense, and the tunnel, what can I say about the tunnel? It was not scary whatsoever this year. That was the weakest the tunnel had been altogether this year. But that ending is brilliant. Um, I've heard that there's so many different endings with that. We got a staff member in front of the window and one behind, and then a sleeper kills the person behind the window, and then you have to get out, and it doesn't really make it didn't make a lot of sense, but it was still good. Um, I personally think Platform 15, it's not as good as last year, but it is still good, I personally think. And then the second best maze of the night that we did was um, The Walking Dead Do or Die. Now, this was a really good maze last year, and I had high expectations for this. And... Oh my god, the Walking Dead Do or Die is completely different compared to last year. School bus isn't as intense as last year, but the rest of the maze is good. Um, there are isolation booths in the containers, but they weren't in action. I've heard there's going to be changes to the maze as well, so I hope I look forward to get back in them soon. But the Walking Dead Do or Die this year is brilliant. Um, the acting in there is the actors in there are just brilliant. Shout out to Preston and Sam in there. You guys are brilliant. Um, but yeah, Do or Die, it, it's brilliant this year. I absolutely love it. And of course, also, we didn't do Screenplex Cinema either on the night, which was a shame. Uh, we just couldn't get any time. We didn't get time to fit in, really. Uh, and then the best maze of the night for me was Creek Freak Massacre. New for this year in the Loggers Leap building. I went into this with high expectations and I was impressed. I was really, really impressed with Creek Freak. The acting in there is brilliant. Shout out to Renee, Tiger, Jack, Alice, you lot are just fucking amazing. Um, but yeah, the theming in there is brilliant. There's some really good effects in there. There's smoke, heat effects, strobe lighting. Um, trying to think what else. There's, uh, there's a scene where there's this guy laying on the table and he gets a sword pushed down into him. And there's a water spray. Absolutely brilliant. And the chainsaws in there are intense. When we went through, we had three chainsaws. Uh, I don't know if there's normally more in there. Can I just say, the strobe maze in there is mental. Uh, although on my last one through, I did accidentally walk into one of the fences and it hurt my nose. Ouch. Um, 
my only thing I weren't really happy with, with Creek Freak is the ending. After the strobe maids, you go through like a black curtain into the chase out. The chase out to me doesn't feel intense. It's, it, it, it feels flat. Um, but yeah, Creek Freak Massacre is definitely a good maze. I think for Creek Freak, the longest we waited was like 20 minutes. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Please get yourself down to Fort Park Fright Nights this year and try out Creek Freak Massacre and all the mazes. I'll be going back down there soon. Um, the next Halloween event I'm going to is Chessington Halloween, where we've got creep, uh, the, the, the creepy caves unearthed and creepy caves after dark. What else you got? You've got Trick or Treat Wood and you've got New for 2019 Spiders. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content. And um, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Which will be either my blog or review from Chesington Halloween. Uh, until then, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.